All right, welcome to Teacher Teaching Teachers. Um, Marina Lombardo is here, and Jack, and Christina, and David. And we, uh, we're gonna start with Marina. Marina and has been torturing her, torturing her third graders with state tests for a couple of weeks now. I'm joking, I'm sorry. I know it's a, a serious stuff. Like, what have you been up to? Um, it's serious because it's emotional and yeah. The third What's graders the are doing state tests? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, I don't know what it's like in other states, but in New York state, um, the testing program starts in third grade for ELA and math. So we're almost finished. Um, we have our second day of math tomorrow and then um, that'll be it for the year. Cool. Um, I didn't mean to make light of it. I, I know it's not the, the funnest thing to do, but you've been... It's been a hard time. Mm. It's challenging. Cool. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that we are going to look at, um, and just on Friday, Marina presented a descriptive review with Cecilia Trow. Oh. Christ Christina knows. I, I can't even believe I forgot how that was just Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Christina's familiar That's with this. Cool. I love this review. Yeah. yeah. What did you present? I loved it. I I had a moment with Paul and Cecilia at the end after everyone left, and I was like, I feel like I have a rush. Are you supposed to feel that way after you do this? <laughs> That's really um, cool. It felt really, really great. Um, to go through and I'm, I'm reading bits and pieces of her book. Um, so it was like pretty cool to see it in action. And I, I've definitely had experiences with it throughout like the um, time that I've been doing stuff with like the New York City writing project and in other ways. Um, but not like what I experienced on Friday. So I got a lot of, a lot of really good feedback on some work that I did and, and to keep doing, not just, you know, but started, I guess, in September with prompt engineering and the third graders and <clears throat> art generation. And it was really interesting because I got some feedback from some of the educators on the call of things that I had never really considered. Um, so that was really cool to hear. And what was that? What were those things? What 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 kind of feedback did you get, Marie? You off top? Of well, I thought it was really interesting when I was sharing about how my colleague and I had started the process, and we did all the work around intelligence. Like that led to having some conversations around, um, is it intelligent? You know, and um, and certainly since September, I think that like my understanding has emerged. Um, around that too. Then there was, I believe one of the participants was a school media library specialist mm -hmm. and they brought up the, like the layer of children, of people, forget about children, people being able to generate their own images, right? In multiple mediums and how that correlates with um, media literacy skills and recognizing that, hey, if I can make something, anybody can make something and, and to maybe like begin to uh, frame some of this work too within that lens as well that, you know, this is also teaching me that I need to be critical of what I'm looking at as well. So I thought that was really cool. And, you know, I do a lot of media literacy work with the kids, but I really hadn't thought about th that particular project from that perspective. Mm hmm um gosh what else well it's, it's natural my notes with me i took so many notes but um, it's, it, it's natural for you to focus on like what else kind of thing but what what they also noticed was how iterative the process was oh how, yeah the revision and the absolute joy they took in doing it yeah and, and all of that as well yeah because yeah, we um shared some of the kids um drafts so maybe their draft one two and three maybe just draft one maybe just draft three and some of the kids had reflective videos so 
I know one thing, that, you know, we were using computer science language with the kids. So we kind of were also, you know, including that aspect of the intersection between computer science and writing process. And um, I, again, I, there was another teacher who said like, your kids are going back to, you know, revise their work. And, you know, as an educator, it can be really hard to get kids to do revision. And I agree because they, I've lived that many times. Like we write something, you know, when you're around their age and it's done. Um, but this actually sparked them to want to keep going back to it, um, to refine it. And that was, you know, another little like, I think, glimmer of, of the project that I had never really emphasized as much. Like, I, I mean, like, I guess I kind of thought of it like discreetly, but I never really thought about that larger idea of, of how hard it can be to um, have students want to revisit their pieces. And um, that, that was really interesting too, because they were getting almost like their feedback from what was being produced. You know? So, and, and I'd like to jump, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that's huge. And I, in my mind's eye, so thank you for sharing that. And in my mind's eye, this is the work that you shared with us a while mm -hmm. back here oh. on TPT, right? Yeah, okay. we did. Because it's the work where you were writing poems and then they made the images and then they were tweaking whether they liked the image or not and then rewriting their poems. Was that right? Actually, I think we're talking about two different. So, yeah, so we had them doing prompts. So they were just writing prompts about generating a type of image. And then there was another project that we did where they were writing identity poems using their birthstone as a, as a metaphor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. A, well, that's, that's the one a, you shared. That's yeah, and that was, that was a lot of fun, too. I mean, I'd love to do, like, I'd love to, sh yeah, that, that, that was a project that the kids really loved a lot. And. That was pretty cool, too, because what I did was I took their poems, their first drafts, and I put them into, um, I think I used Copilot for that one and had, you know, I said, to, like, yeah, I did. And I said, generate, you know, some images based on this poem. And then the kids got the four different images and then they used the images to kind of um, build another line or two that was off the of the uh, scaffold. So we really, we kind of started with like I am poems, but we really like mashed it up with the support of the image generation a little bit. Yeah. I think those revision, like those ideas about revision seem really exciting. So. Yeah. And they're fun. I find <laughs> them fun. <laughs> they, um, want to get a little technical with you um and when when you said they got the images you actually you take their poem or their prompt and you go to in one case it was dolly i think another case it was um this was it you just said what it was and i forget the microsoft copilot Co yeah it was yeah well that's, that's all integrated now yeah okay but they, they don't actually go to those. And this is something Christina asked, uh, I think, last week even. Like, are, are, the, are the kids using the tools themselves? Or do you take, do you go to the tool with their writing, get the results and come back to them? That's, That's how what we I, do. They, uh -huh. can't use, they can't use Copilot. Um, I don't know if that falls with under the, the New York state data privacy law or not that one, mm -hmm. um, or if it's just about their age, but we do have um, Canva and we do have Padlet and they are two um, companies that signed our New York state um, data privacy agreement and Padlet has art generation um, mm -hmm inside of it as and so does um canva so they they do have some access now and we have done work with perplexity which they they've used um because they don't they have to sign themselves. in uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. they don't have to sign in um it's pretty incredible what the kids have learned this past year in fact alana is you know i mean this is her world and everything but um she's actually had a couple of my kids 
be on panels for educators. And it's, it's like, even when I listen to them talk, I'm like, oh my gosh, wow. The, the things that they're, you know, they're not just like spitting back information. They like really do. They are like really learning important ideas around this technology. Mm -hmm. Um, it's pretty cool. So I, and I don't mean to, um, there's a lot of things going on, right? And wonder a lot of wonderful things. And yeah. this is not a necessary um, progression, but there there is a move. If you end up using writing partners, and by the way, we've signed the um, <laughs> the data Ed agreement Blood also. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Writing partners has signed that as well. And for extra protection, we're not using any of the kids' real names, right? Mm -hmm. In in any work we do there, but both with perplexity that you just mentioned and with writing partners, there's a, a kind of a move toward what if we put these tools in the hands of kids themselves, mm -hmm. right? And we don't know what that's going to look like yet. And you've been wisely cautious about it. Yeah. Do you, so what do you think? Do you have any thoughts about any of that? <laughs> well, I have a lot of conversations with people around what is ethical and what makes mm -hmm. sense to support the kids with. And I think that the conversation I'm having people mm -hmm. are around like, this is definitely going to enhance practices. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going away. And um, if the conversation about kids still cheating and you know, using it to do their work for them is, is still a strong, um, you know, message. I think that people are concerned about, I, I think that's exactly why the education needs to be <laughs> included now and start to think around. Cool. So, um, what is, what is, what is, what do the kids need to know so that they're not using this for the wrong reasons? having it just do work for them um how do i mean how do they learn how to learn from it how do they learn how to get better with it i don't know i'm doing a faculty meeting tomorrow i actually was just watching um because we we went to a conference a couple um about a month and a half ago so we finally are turning some of the ideas and we had um john S spencer as the mm -hmm. keynote speaker i don't know if everybody's familiar with him he's really pretty incredible and um he's um i learned about him because he, he, he's a maker right i mean he's yeah like that's what i was gonna say he's like really into like design thinking and making and that's when i came um like I learned about him because he worked with AJ Giuliani and they came up with an acronym for design thinking um, in the classroom. And I bought their book and I was like reading it and writing notes all in it. And so I've, I've been like reading his stuff for a really long time and like implementing his ideas and his practices. And um, he did just, you know, so he's like most people is, is leaning into this and not, you know, he, He's, but anyway, point being why I brought him up is because like I'm putting together just a couple slides to share with the faculty about like what he even said um, about AI. I mean, he really like I'm not an AI. I'm reading this from a He's not an AI apps expert. He said that in his keynote too. Um, but his real thing is like how how can we use it so our students are more self directed and adaptable, you know? And then he did a really great breakout session on supporting students and personalized needs. Mm. I. I, I think that, you know, it's just like a complete reframing of the the scary side of like the negative and, you know, what, what capabilities does this have for all learners to have personalized learning for real? Like it's a very easy phrase to say, very difficult to do. Um, Marina, I think it's, um, it might be interesting to I mean, like, I'm just struck by, you know, the kind of assignments that you're giving the kids or things that they care about. And part of that care, you can tell because they're revising, right? <laughs> like that's, so do you have an opportunity to share any of that with, at the professional development? I mean, I know that can be feel a little weird to like share your work, but it feels like it's kind of interesting like like if they have topics that they care about and they're using it in that way yeah well we i mean we have a very 
busy faculty meeting type of route schedule type mm -hmm. of thing. We have two a month. Um, the director of technology, who is Alana, who I think everybody's been on a call where she's been on, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. She, you know, she. Alana she, Winnick. Yep. Yeah, yep. Alana Winnick. Sorry. Um, yep. She. Um, she's slotted for certain for certain um, um, sessions sometimes. And, you know, she really tries to make it very experiential for all of us. Like, so when she like rolled out VR headsets a couple of months ago, you know, she had them <laughs> out on the table for all of us to experience. And we went to Egypt, ancient Egypt. And then when we go to conferences, we turn key. So we went to Nice Gate last fall and then a team of us, and then we turned key. And we went to this one, which was a local and, and we're turnkeying tomorrow. There's not always enough time, I think, to mm -hmm. share out ideas. We, we, we try to, um, and, you know, I, I know that it's sometimes, it's hard sometimes for people to, I guess, sit through faculty meetings after a, a day of teaching. Um, and I don't know 100% what the pulse in my school is on what people think or or want to do with right, 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 artificial right. intelligence. I think that, you know, she's really encouraged people to mostly begin to explore it for their own productivity mm -hmm. um, as like a first step. And there, you know, there's a few of us. Um, I'm one of them. Our French teacher is another who have been really interested in like, well, what, what does this actually look like when it, when kids are, are able to have experiences with it? Um, right. And that's, you know, one thing I brought up to Paul a couple months ago, I didn't even know he was working on writing partner, he wrote you an email just saying like, you know, I really want to know more about what's going on. Oh, it was actually after Educon because I met one teacher, uh, um, finally, like a third, she was a third grade teacher too. Anyway, I was like, what are people doing in elementary? I hear a lot about um, middle school and high school and college, but yeah. what's happening elementary. And I don't necessarily need to hear more of, I'm using it to make less. And that sounds, that didn't sound nice the way I put those words together. I didn't mean it in a snotty way, okay. but like, okay. I don't like, you know, but yes, is it great for getting ideas for lesson plans? Definitely. I've kind of tinkered around with that a lot myself, just, just kind of see what does it spark and what does it emerge for me? Something I might not have ever thought to do. Um, and support with, you know, writing emails and parent newsletters, all those kind of things, making worksheets. I don't do that personally because I'm, I kind of want, I, that's kind of one of those things where I'm like, nope, I want to still have my hands on that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I want to know what, how kids are interacting and, and where it's going to go from there. So that's kind of, I think why, you know, Alana and I have collaborated a lot because I think we're both kind we're both exploring that. It would be nice to try to maybe in the teacher network, we could try to see if we could emerge some more elementary teachers doing this work because Maria and I do agree. You're like the one voice that I have heard a lot of, you know, like about the student work mm. from. So, but maybe we can find some folks. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. And and invite them to TTT, Paul. Yeah, uh, th there is a um, a school near Rochester that we're working mm. with as well and trying to get them on. There's a fourth grade teacher there who's going to do some work with us. Um, but not but, but and again, I'm just wondering, I think so. Just to my simple formulator, right? <laughs> the, the, what I saw you do in the descriptive review was take the prompt um, put it into, I think you were doing, using Dolly at that point, mm -hmm. get four images back, put that into a PowerPoint and yeah. bring it back to the kids. And, and so it took a day, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is still pretty fast for getting an image, but how would it be different when they're doing that themselves, when they can iterate even faster? Um, I'm, and I'm, and I use the word different in a, well, not better or worse, right? I yeah. Just... So I think it would be different because Alana and I purposely gave pr presented them with the information, their pictures, like in a way so that there was pause too for reflection. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, when she's came in to do the co-teaching work with me, there were lessons that were like, yeah, we're not, we're not actually revising today. We're going to reflect and think about what maybe, you know, are we satisfied with what was created? Are we dissatisfied? What, um, what should we have done differently? Which words did we use? I'm confirming evidence of what the, how the text is matching the image mm-hmm. um, and kind of slowing them down. And then um, that was all presented like uh, those reflections were on a Padlet. So kids could actually look at look and listen to other reflections. Um, and so that so w- what would be different is maybe that part. But one one thing that I did actually recently is they were making, um, oh God, we have another project going on. Uh, There's always something going on in this class. (laughs) They're making, um, we're we're collaborating, we've done this for a past past couple of years. We're collaborating with local archive and Mm -hmm. um, every couple of years I spin a new project with the archivist. And we started last year, we piloted out an idea on sustainable communities. And what we do is we actually study a structure um, called the Union Church in our area. And we kind of learn a lot about the history and how it was built and all the documentation that is available in respects to how it was built. And then the students really dig into and like what is community, what... um, this what? sounds that doesn't sound like my third grade, but go ahead. <laughs> I just said the same thing, Paul. I was like, "Oh my god, this is such a cool third grade." Oh, yeah. Yeah, Carter, sorry. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of fun when I was in third grade, so I'm trying to make up for it for all the years that I, didn't mean I to guess interrupt to you be that. a third grader. You know, uh, times two, three, four, five. I don't know how many times I've done third grade, but um, I really didn't have a good third grade. Great. That's that's a true story. But um, yeah, so what they're doing is um, they're creating, um, there's a couple elements to it, but one of the things that they do is they create a restaurant. So um, that's a maker part. So they have to make a logo. So they were making a logos for their restaurant. Mm-hmm. And oh, no, wait, you know what? That was the logos for their name. Um, well, in any case, they were making a logo on Canva and they were using Magic Media. And what they did is they actually um, screen recorded themselves as they were creating. We, they turned off the audio. So it's like a complete just no sound. And I watched a few of them. They just did this like a week ago. I watched a few of them and it was really cool because I could actually see them as they're typing in their prompts, what they're getting, how they're making decisions, how they're modifying the image, um, size, how they're adding in text, how they're just erasing something, how they're completely changing their idea. So that was kind of cool too, um, in respects to seeing their process and maybe like making some inferences about their, um, about their, logo design and i know um we just didn't do it because we haven't gotten back to the archivist work in the past couple of days with the tests and everything but they um one thing i wanted them to do was to consider doing a voiceover after the fact so that they were adding in what they might have been thinking or why they were making the change yeah it's a good idea all right so i This has been amazing context. <laughs> um, can you, given uh, uh, this uh, amazing work you're doing in so many different ways, how are you seeing writing partners maybe fitting in at this point? Or um, you, the last email to me, and I know it was like it looked like it was between classes or something. <laughs> But, was it yesterday? I was in class yeah. yesterday when I was catching up with my emails. <laughs> okay. Anyway, was was something like um, maybe they could take their podcast and get the habits of mind responses, right? Um, yeah. So, but but just break down what you're kind of imagining this project might be because it keeps changing as the semester goes on. But and we're getting yeah, well, right I right to the end. I know. What yeah, is but, that? They actually again. I like when students sometimes take a pause from something, and yes. then they go back and they revisit it. And okay. I think that that could be a really good way to reignite the work. Um, they have drafts, and mm-hmm. those drafts have gone through a revision process. But there are certainly students that drafts, drafts of a 
of a biography. Biography, yeah, for and, their podcasts. And they're in PowerPoint still, or did you get them out? Are they in text yet? They're still in PowerPoint, but one okay. I mm-hmm. would just I would teach the kids. Remember, was I on the call? Was I on a call with you when yeah, I figured you out? And how I, to do that? We practiced with yours, but yeah. Yeah, because, I can yeah. teach them how to do that, and that'll mm-hmm. that's just another skill they'll put in their toolbox, right? Like. Um, I just so you, Christina and David, you know, like I, I tend to use like PowerPoint exactly. sometimes when I'm helping the kids to build like um, mm-hmm. something that's multi paragraphs or multi ideas just for them to have that separation. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's, you know, because it's, it's not concrete. The slide by slide separation. Yeah. So that. Yeah, I mean, different so ideas clear. for different slides. I think it gets it's, it's a little it's what I've noticed. Sometimes it can be challenging on 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 word to do that. And, you know, um, it's like the most similar thing I can think of when I would do, I mean, I still do stuff on paper. I just didn't do this on paper, but even like when I have like different ideas for different papers and then they have a couple of different papers to sort out, sort them out. But really, really good things is to like, we got like more resources, our librarian brought in more resources so they can revisit and add and build up. But I thought what, the habits of mind. I've, I, I don't even know. It was a month ago or more than that. And I was playing around with the writing partners to come up with some that were a little bit more about the writing structure and the, the, um, maybe the precision. I can't even remember what I had created that night, Mm -hmm. but I think that the um, habits of mind actually would help them to go deeper um, with the people. Certainly maybe not all of them, right? What do you mean? Well, we could choose some. No, not all of them. Not all of them. I think perseverance, right? Then the first one is probably one of the the obvious one. And then maybe two others, kind of like how, you know, when when we were doing some stuff with uh, Lute Stem, it was always like a few three maybe so let me let me get let me try to get this so they are currently they have biographies they did over a month ago they're in powerpoint you're gonna there is a way to just download the text i think you and i figured that out we may have to review that but yeah you can transfer it from the powerpoint to a word document right okay and you're a microsoft school so that that's all going to work out pretty nicely i think right um and and then we're going to copy and paste that into a document on writing partners. Are we, are we, is that making sense still? Mm-hmm. And then what? Oh, wait. So they're going to get feedback from Habits of Mind coaches there that we designed for them. And I have something, I think you've looked at it before, but I have something to show you that just looks, looks at that. Yeah, go ahead. And just in terms of logistics, at that point, if if the step is the, you copy their bios from the PowerPoint into a writing partner's profile, the students are working with their not real names and their on writing partners. They you, cannot. Yeah, they cannot. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Paul, if you've talked to Alana since then, but she said still pseudo names. No, no, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, yeah pseudonyms are great. They're, 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 but they're on their own login, looking at their work in writing partners and. Paul, when you talk about custom or crafting a habit of mind lens, you yes, do that for a third grader in terms of the prompt design and the the background, so that and and then they would begin to interact with that. Would that be something you you and uh, Marina would do together? Or I'm um, I'm curious about the tuning of the prompt so that third graders are feel um, at ease with it or mm-hmm. motivated by it. Versus- yeah. So let's come back to that. But I I want to I want to uh, yeah. I, Absolutely, um, Marina. But you want them eventually to take these texts and and read them as a pod as an audio. Hmm. Yeah. Is that right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think that that sort of bench eventual. And this is all before when? <laughs> before the end of June. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. They can do yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. They're okay. almost. Of course. Of course they I mean. Can. They- I- <laughs> yeah. So Paul, in that regard, if that was an if that's the if that's the end goal, the artifact. Would there there would be and Alana, this is back to you. Would there be like a two step process where Marina, yeah. the students would encounter a habit of mind prompt or two, and then the prompt would turn towards looking at the style or 
helping the student think through how to do it performatively in terms of reading and making sure it works orally. And I don't know, I'm curious about that because it's a, the multimodality of it all is very interesting and in using um, an LLM to both deal with a structured scaffold like Habits of Mind and then a performative one like reading. I don't know, it's, a, it's an interesting phase to um, getting to the artifact itself, the final product. I'm curious about that. Paul, do you have any thoughts about that? Marina, do you? Is there time to do that in I, a two-step process? Is it, is it, or is it I, being I, I'm not sure how that's going to look at. I, I don't know. Yeah, I was just curious about that yeah. piece. Mm -hmm. How are you going to record them? Hmm. I mean, oh, we have, we have um, lots of ways. Yeah, but, yeah. We have we video. Mm -hmm. We use we video. Um, and they're pretty comfortable with using that tool. Yeah, and they're recording well, it's themselves great because all the it's web-based so, yeah. and collaborative too. So mm -hmm. I can actually be a collaborator on that as well. So let's take a look for a minute, and and I'm hopefully going to share this properly. At one habit of mine for young writers that I've created. Am I sharing my screen yet? Mm, Not I don't yet. think so. Okay, I knew I wasn't. I was just, uh, no, I didn't know I wasn't. Okay, I think I will now. How's that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can make it bigger if you need to. But so, um, there is a bunch of, so I took, uh, the, the the school near Rochester, um, they're not on, they're not working with us quite yet, so I don't want to say much more than that. But just to say that they put together, um, responding with wonderment and awe, and gathering data through all the senses, and they focus on that. Those two in April, um, they do all of their assessments with them. It's kind of an amazing school that um, around the habits of mind. Um, and and it's a fourth grade teacher who wants to kind of pilot something before the end of the year with us. So I did this, right? You're seeing fourth grade opinion writing sample? Mm hmm Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, move that out. Okay, sorry. Just need to move my screen a little bit. Oh, darn. Okay. So this is what it does. And we can look at the prompt later and say, you know, I wish it did this or that. That's worth doing. Um, but I just grabbed this. I don't even remember where I grabbed this from anymore. But here's a fourth grade reading sample or writing sample, right? Um, pretty sophisticated, actually, but it's OK. Uh, and what we say over here, we say, you know, can you help me with this? And it responds like this. It says, hey there, young writer. So you're thinking about saving old things, huh? This is pretty cool. Let's let's dive into your writing and see how we can make it better. You're doing a great job of sharing your thoughts. You've explained why you think you should save old things by mentioning how they can get amazing. So some response to the content. But now let's take it up a notch. Have you thought more about it? So it brings in the responding with wonderment and awe, and it brings in the gathering of using your senses in the next paragraph. Tried to play around a little bit with the fonts, you know, um, maybe we could continue to play with that. But then it, it does have these here for them. And again, depend in the school where, we're, where we were sort of prototyping this, they are already totally familiar with this like this icon with what what these things are all about they talk about them all the time your kids might be less so but you could introduce it right? well i would yeah i would teach them mm -hmm. lesson i would i would do off screen work with them on that yeah and and so we can think about and you were saying persistence so we can think about which ones they are but then there are these, they're, they're, they're not, they're, there are some that you can subscribe to and cost quite a bit of money, frankly. But anyway, um, but these are free on YouTube. It's a very quick, um, you can hear this? Mm. No. Oh, you can't. 
All right, so it's a video that kind of breaks out one of the habits of mine. So that that all came from just saying, hey, can you help me with this? I know it's a lot, but we're trying to think about making something that's interesting for a third grader, fourth grader to look at, play with, and the response, we could also make it simpler. So that's a, a thought. Paul, technical, just a logistic question. Yeah. What did you do to the prompt? How was the prompt designed to pull in that video and that image? What were the steps? It's simply, um, and we could look at it, but it's probably, we could just, I could just say, it's simple as at the bottom, always, always add this and you just put the uh, embed code. Got it. Okay. Right? So you just tell the AI, yeah. um, you know, when you're responding to this, add this embed code. That's, I mean, just to just to pick up on that, the idea that the, that the AI could provide age appropriate, entertaining, um, educationally relevant information that's appealing like this to these is very very compelling. I'm I'm thinking, Christina, briefly of the, um, I forget the name of the thing you guys did at NWP with, just before the launch of um, OpenAI stuff. There was a, a bot that you did. What's the name of it? There was a chat bot that followed and spat up um, multimedia and try this and look at that. I think Elise shared an example of the URL at one point, and I was looking at that and seeing what it, and I was experiencing what it was like to get multimedia in my feed in response to queries. And it's exciting to see that here in this way. Um, and to think that you could script that as a piece of the sequence. It's so nice. Sort of as always with this stuff, though, I want to I want to quickly say and come back to you, Marina, that um, this is just me sitting in my room trying to say, oh, how could how could we make this interesting for a third grader, right? And mm -hmm. and meaningful and and like really help them revise. But it may be too much. It may be not enough. You know, I don't know, um, and it may not be the right. So we need your thoughts about this. And, oh, here's the other big question. Does this help the, ch the, young, the child? I'm allowed to say child. <laughs> Does it help the third grader move toward making that podcast, right? And I, I'm not sure it does yet, but those are some of the questions I have with this idea. <laughs> you have any thoughts that you can help us with, Marina? Or what are you thinking when you see this? Well, I'm thinking about how sometimes I have, I, when the students have used perplexity and we've done a prompt, we might add in like, um, to write, you know, give the information in a bulleted bullet form, mm -hmm. um, to kind of break down, um, the, like the read like to, to make it just when it's yeah i don't think my prompt too says much that, word that's good I, yeah. and i like how i did like how the each paragraph started with a bolded sentence mm -hmm. um but that that's one thing that we've done we also like kind of say like you know explain it's it. actually very we we figured out that it's actually very good at doing bullets when you say do bullets i don't mm -hmm. know why but it is <laughs> yeah Go ahead. What else were you thinking? Um, we also like kind of use that like expression. Explain it to me like I'm five mm -hmm. years old or something. <laughs> um, if it's getting like you know, if it's a very complex topic, yeah. Um, or even if it's not. Marina, just a, just an administrative detail. Can you remind me when kids go on to a different platform, they go on to writing partners with unique, um, you know email addresses or or usernames uh, is it the same exercise with the same protocol for perplexity can you remind me how they navigate they don't, log in. They don't they have to log into that <clears throat> that one's just straight up browser they just yeah. type it totally anonymous that's right yeah and that's why we're we're you know that we yeah. had permission to use that one right so you can just do generic and they can just do whatever got it yeah mm -hmm. and also that one's that one that has other we've done a lot of other stuff with that because it does pull up um, like five sources that it's, you know, right. pulling from. So we've done a lot of work with um, credibility of sources and you can remove sources too. So we've done a lot of really nice work with that as well too. Mm -hmm. 
So, so we'll have to, we'll, that other thing. we will give them very, very simple usernames and passwords, right? Mm -hmm. That they, and you can you can be there to help them. I don't know how that will yeah, work sure. in the classroom. I'm sure Alana will too. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So, really, I'm, what kind of thinking partner? Given what I just showed you, what are you? I don't want to. You know, I, we're just asking you in, out of the cold here, but. What yeah, other just, kinds of thinking I'm, partners can you imagine they would be helpful? I'm just looking up the, I just want to have the, all of the habits of mine in front of me for a second. Oh, I'm just looking uh -huh. up a picture of them. Um, okay. So, oh, they're in a different order now. Um, there is yeah, no official order, but good. Yeah. yeah. Persisting. Pers persisting is what you don't, yeah. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. And then um, I also think, like, if I was to pick two or three at the definitely the persisting, because obviously it's a persist, per, perseverance, po the persistence pod. Um, <clears throat> and I like the um, responding with wonderment and awe as well, too. Because, and we could actually play know, with the one just... the one I created and try to make it even more child friendly than yeah than that one is. And then I yeah. do think I do wonder about the thinking and communicating with clarity and precision one, mm. um, because maybe that could be the angle into ensuring that <clears throat> they're writing makes sense it's again like i'm just looking at the descriptions there's not an over generalization like is is there a possibility to be more specific could that being more specific might either get them to rewrite and add that information or say oh well i need to find that information hmm. um so i think that could actually be a really good one actually and i'm thinking that's probably way enough <laughs> oh yeah i wouldn't but, do more yeah. than that no yeah yeah, yeah. but I I think persistence makes sense because that's in alignment with the lens of the, like, the project. But then the responding with wonderment, oh, I think, hmm, well, can identify the beauty in the work of both the student as well as the person they're researching. Mm -hmm. As well as maybe, like, pull out some information, like, pull out some really nice um, ideas and vocabularies and expressions that they didn't think of. And then, like I said, the thinking, communicating with clarity and precision could actually be well, let's think about like, you know, your audience and how are you making sure that what you want to say is being heard the way that you intend for it to be. And, um, and again, just the, the length, the use of language too. I'm convinced. Anybody? <laughs> Any other? One of the, one of the, uh, I wanted to ask another question. Um, have they given hear feedback to each other do they like look at each other's writing and oh yeah they do that they we do that sometimes for certain projects yeah okay and how's that go so... well they it, it this would be a really great time to do some work around that okay um we have some protocols that we've used before like the like two stars and a wish like where uh, once well, yeah well that was part of what you created a uh, as a, as a way to give feedback. You did. Oh, you, yeah, because you, I forgot who was on here that reminded me of that. <laughs> yeah. Wait, but you did You did two stars and a wish. As, I did. As, I mean, as, as that's one. one of the thinking partners I made, right? So we could have, we could make sure that thinking partner works well. And we could actually okay. maybe find a way to incorporate um, an actual star. But we'll, we'll think about that. Um, I don't know. All right. So that's good. But. One of the one of the things of the AI in this class is that humans are going to be involved too. So I think it'd be really wonderful if they commented on each other's as well as just using it for an AI thing. You understand what mm -hmm. I mean? So they can go on, click on a paragraph that they want to give a star to and say, I'm going to give this a star because. 
but I, I don't know if that fits into your time frame and workflow. But do you hear what I'm suggesting there? I hear it. No, you know, you know an outcome. Why am I telling you this? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I think I think that would be a great um, addition to the work too. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And just to suggest an answer, to not not an answer, a, a, a hypothesis about how it would be different when the children are using the tools themselves, is that they then could decide, I want, you know, I just want uh, my teacher to respond to me, or they could decide, I want my peers to respond to me, or I want to go in and see what that but that weird habit of mind thing tells me, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's too much decision making for a third grader or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes I have certain protocols with students and I might wanna do this with a new tool where they have a specific partner to work with mm. um, because I know that sometimes, you know, somebody might get a little bit more, you know, attention to their piece, depending on who they are or something, you know what I mean? Like, so, um, and it's, it would be a new thing for them. So I might have like some more like structured protocols with partnering them up on purposefully and meaningfully, um, so okay. yeah, so I just want to I just I just want to remind all, you, you know this already, but that the tool is built for that too, not just for playing yeah. the AI, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <sighs> all right. Marina, I totally appreciate that you came here and allowed us to <laughs> go into inside, inside your brain a little bit. Here. I know I feel uh, I, I feel bad. My brain's really tired. <laughs> I hope it's like coherent. Very coherent. Are you, are you kidding? <laughs> so yeah, some round of uh, comments back to Marina. I mean, unless you have other thoughts, Marina, but it's really helpful to hear you describe the experiments that you're doing with students. It's fabulous. It's amazing to me how much you're managing in terms of the perspectives you're introducing to them, and it's really inspiring to see the way you're picking off functionality and features in these various tools. So kudos to you. And to back to where you started, it sounds like Alana is inviting you to speak to the your 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 community in your staff meeting to get folks to think about developing a practice with AI. You're modeling a way to do this. Is that right? Is the goal of you sort of presenting to sort of just familiarize them, have them familiarize themselves with the fact that there are some innovators here who are doing things, or is there a directed goal for the um the staff that Alana's got in mind. Yeah, well, I mean, there, there's one the expectation that, you know, if you go to a conference, yeah, you should be turnkeying, regardless of its technology or literacy or whatever. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, they don't always, that doesn't always happen. Um, yeah. But she's very, you know, she's very, but she's very persistent. So she, when she, when it's her time, she knows like, nope, 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 the people, my team, they're, they're going to be good and they're doing that. Um, so awesome. that's number one. And, uh, you know, I, she's very big on authentic learning experiences and, you know, relevant learning experiences and reimagining what school looks like, too. So I think that's another reason why, you know, we keep sharing with the community and not just, you know, our, our school community. Um, yeah. You know, she's, you know, she does a lot outside of just our school. Um, mm -hmm. And she empowers those within our school to share out their ideas in, in different ways too. So mm -hmm. nice. Cool, cool. Christina, you have any final thoughts or later thoughts, no. whatever they are? Yeah. I do, I do think it would be interesting to think about um, uh, or to, I'll keep an eye out for other people at that grade level. Hmm. Um, cause I think a conversation among people who are trying it with, with the younger kids, I think. Could and be Marina, really Marina once, 
Marina wants to get next to these people too, right? You want you would love to have a group I, like that. Yeah, yeah I yeah. do. I, I yeah. really want to have conversations with people about all of this. Not that we're having a conversation, but I mean, do you know what I mean? Like Yeah, yeah. But no, you're right. There's lots of high school stories and stuff. And yeah. then I guess um uh you know, this idea, I've been struck by um, Robert Reich, Reich wrote this piece about how this technology has arrived. It's not being adopted. You know, we're not adopting it. We're not adopting it in our lives or adopting it in schools like we would normally adopt a technology. Or in the old days, we used to adopt technologies. We'd like, oh, let's use this technology or not. Mm -hmm. Now it just kind of arrives and it arrives in all of our stuff. Right. And it's yeah. like there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so this, I don't know, he was calling for kind of a framework for thinking about that. Like, what do you like? How do you think about arrival technologies? Um, mm -hmm. Like, what what do we do about that? Like, what's the conversation we have to have as colleagues about these these technologies that arrive? Um, I mean, we were even at the writing project talking about like at, with my colleagues talking about, um, you know, like COVID arrived and climate change arrives, like all these things are kind of arriving. Mm. Right? And yeah. what yeah. what is this moment that we're in? Um, and so I guess I was just seeing, like you mentioned the media, sorry, this is a long way of saying, like you mentioned the media literacy piece of it, Marina, and that's mm -hmm. another piece I'd love to keep talking about. It's like, what do we have to understand about where we, what this is and what are we doing with it? And you know, um, so I thought it was cool that you mentioned that earlier, mm. um, both that you've been doing some media literacy work and that, you know, the descriptive review gave you some new ideas for that too. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Christina, I appreciate that point. I've read that article too. And the, the idea of an arrival technology is not just cool. It's kind of, it's very intimidating, right? Yes. Because I say it's like, COVID arrived and, you know, other things arrive and suddenly you have to really re-change and you have to really reorient. It's not negotiable. And then for so long, all of EdTech has been incremental serial, you know, explorations. Right. We felt like we had a lot more control over it, <laughs> it yeah. whether we did or not. <laughs> yeah. Or whether it was, you know, you kind of did it, you didn't have to, you weren't immediately aware of its effect on your, on your engagement, maybe your productivity. It was always a sort of effort to string the pieces together. And yeah. now it's just omnipresent in part because it's just language and it shows up in our browser and just there. And so the urgency and to, to find examples like what you're doing, Marina, and have it be put in front of people as exam as a exemplar for how someone's engaging with curiosity. Um, it's very, very, it's very meaningful. And so I agree. trying to I sort of describe it in response to arrival technology is a very, is a really interesting provocation. Yeah. What is this article? Sorry. I'd like to read it. It's an, okay, MIT, read it. it's an MIT article that was published about a month ago or so. Okay. Uh, I'll send you a link. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. They just, just, just as, I mean, talking to Bonnie Benton recently, um, it's arrived in her classroom too, right? But the history teacher and the English teacher in 10th grade um, will not allow it in their classroom, right? Okay. So that's another response to arrival technology. It's like never in my classroom, right? <laughs> so, and when that's happening in, I don't know. I don't know if you have any colleagues like that, Marina, but I'm just curious about the... You don't... <sighs> I, the different kinds of response, like your response is amazing and open, but I'm wondering if other people are resisting the arrival. Right? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if people, some people are also thinking it's like a real arrival. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if I don't, if I don't do it, if I don't touch it, if I don't think about it, it's not really there, maybe. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know. I, and some I people I, are, are, I think, sort of, you know, worried about environmental impact. I mean, like yeah, yeah, all valid stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. 
that there's there's valid questions mm -hmm. and there's an ecosystem question like it's in the ecosystem what do we do about with it about it you know like in relation to it i don't know yeah but yeah all right if school's the place where the walls are being put up you know i think it's that's complex mm -hmm. marina yeah. thank you so much for sharing this was no. not planned no <laughs> Just, like, you, <laughs> but it was really nice. yeah all right all right no, it, was, it was great thanks thank you and paul yeah, um yeah. There's a group that's going to be doing some um, civic journalism. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just was sort of thinking about like using sources tool as one thing, maybe, but mm -hmm. maybe we could sure. go back to that at some point. I I don't really have strong thoughts, but I'm gonna maybe bring up bring it up with the group that's starting this work and see what, how they respond to it and what they're interested in. More than happy to think about that. Yep. Cool. Okay. Of course. Great. All right. Thank all right. you all. Thanks everyone. Thank Say you. thanks to Jack. Thank you. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Bye. 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 <laughs>